Okay, so here are some of the newer units. Uh, I'm going to go do the Axis ones first, then I'll, I'll pause it out and, and do the uh, uh, Soviet Allied ones for a uh, second. So, um, for the Germans, uh, basically you get a lot of different SS stuff um, as new units. Um, and uh, you can get regular SS guys uh, who are fanatics. Um, and, you, you know, you can load them up with... Uh, SS, SMGs and assault rifles and things like that, and they can be tough fighters. So it's not not bad points wise there. Um, you can get regular SS Hungarians. They don't suffer one. It's one for reserve or outflank. They can start hidden or in ambush. A lot of the Hungarians have that. Late war SS replacement guys. They're regular. Um, they can be fanatics. All the SS stuff can be fanatic. First casualty results in a roll. Um, so on a one, they get like the D6 pins and all that stuff. Um, Panzer Grenaders, um, they're kind of cool. They're regular. They can have two LMGs, which is kind of sneaky. Um, and they reroll any tests involving getting in and out of a transport, but you have to have the transport, and I think it has to be armored. So, ugh, I don't know. I guess it works for some people. <laughs> um, SS Pioneers, they can be regular or veteran. They're fanatics. They get to reroll the vehicle rolls as well. And I just wanted to show, I'm going to highlight some of the ones that I really thought were cool. Um, this one here, this cool little tank. Um, it's eight. You can see it's 145 points, and it has uh, here it is, uh, one light anti tank gun, two coax MMGs, two hull mounted MMGs. So they don't have Hitler's buzzsaw, but they are MMGs. So it's 20 shots for 145 points in a tank. You can run guys over. Um, it's you know it's it's not too bad, um, but uh, it is kind of susceptible to <laughs> damage pretty easily. I think so. That's the Germans. Uh, I'm gonna go into the Hungarians here. I'll just. Take a look at these Hungarians, these brilliant new figures. Um, they have the Arrow Cross Militia. Uh, they're 25 points for um, uh, five guys. They only have rifles. They are shirkers, but in hand hand, they count as fanatics. Um, so that's, you know, I mean, they're inexperienced, so you know, I don't, you'd have to have a huge mob of them. And I don't know, I mean, it's, like it says here, I think, I think you can, you can have up to 10 of them, so. I mean, 10 guys for 50 points. Yeah, they could be a bit of a speed bump, I guess. Um, they have assault pioneers, uh, border guard units. Um, border guard units, they, they can also be shirkers if you want. There's an option. They treat woods and forces open ground. Uh, the flotilla, uh, inexperienced infantry. They have a special machine gun, uh, LMG. They can have two of them, but it only has three shots. It's very cheap. It's only five points. But you can only use on a fire ambush out of order. Um, a lot of the Hungarian units, you can take the MMG-42. The MG42 get Hitler's buzzsaw for an extra five points. So you're paying 25 points for that LMG. Um, the parachute assault guys are probably the best guys. Uh, they're veteran. They have tough as boots, and they remove D2 pins. So they're pretty badass. And they can also take the um, the uh, Hitler's buzzsaw. Um, one thing, their special unit that, that was kind of cool that they had that I wanted to highlight. Let me just get to it here. Is this this rocket launcher? Um, it's pretty expensive. But as it says here, it's 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 loaded. It's on a uh, it's on a Soviet Maxim MG wheel carriage, so it's kind of tiny, um, or a custom tripod. Um, they had a whole heap of them, but it has these great special rules. You can load it up, you can put an ambush, but it has a two rocket su uh, uh, salvo, and you can't mix it up. You can have one or the other, and here they are. So you've got a range of 36, one shot, with a pen of seven, which is pretty badass because you'd actually have two of them, and then or you can have the rainfall, which is one shot penetration. Uh, HE3. So I believe the way that it works is that you fire, you would fire two dice. It's a two rocket servo. servo. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. That's a real cool uh, new new weapon that they've got for 120 points. I mean, th this would this would be a total tank killer right there. And this man, you can I mean, if you point and click that 36 inches away, that's a huge blast template. You could mash somebody bad with that. All right, I'm gonna take a look at the Soviets. See what they got. That's new, and the Romanians as well. Hold on two seconds. For the Soviets, um, nothing really kind of jumped off the page for me. It's a lot of Len Lee stuff and Shermans and, and Scout car, M3 Scout, white Scout cars and stuff like that. Um, but the one thing that did sort of was catch my eye was the Mounted Recon Squad here. Um, they can be regular. They can have a flamethrower, as you can see here. A lot of guys can have submachine guns, things like that. You can bump them up to Veteran if you want as well, of course. But here was the Mounted Recon. So here... You can leave, you can split the squad, leave guys in the their transport, and these models can, you know, they can, like it says, cannot rejoin the unit later. Um, and each of the squads left behind the transport, they can add, they can sort of man one of the weapons. Um, and in addition to usually one, like 
and says the otherwise allowed for an empty transport. So I'm thinking here the the, the, the FAQ that's going to come up is like, okay, there's three guys in the M3 scout car. They're all manning machine guns. That's fantastic. I assault it. Do they come out? Do I fight them? Do they, you know, or they don't have a dice because they're in the transport. Do they count as a transport dice? And thus, you know, it counts as an empty transport. So they fired. I've moved up. I'm sitting right next to it. it turns over. You know, is this is is that dice taken out of play? So I think that'll come up. The Romanians, they uh, they don't really have anything super super spectacular, but I may as well just sort of flip to that page. No new figures or anything like that. Uh, but they have a mountain division, which is kind of cool, and they're mountaineers and they're they're veterans. Um, but you'll see later when I'm talking about some of the theater selectors here and the highlights of that. Hold on two seconds. So I'm just going to go through the highlights of the theater selectors. I'm not going to through, go through each one, but uh, some newer rules and some little added on things that they've come up with. So with the Germans, they've got armored assault, so the Germans can use snap to action orders even if they're in an armored transport. So um, I guess that was something that people were like, why can't my officer yell at the guys outside? Well, now he can. Um, and you measure from anywhere on the outside of the vehicle to determine its range. So, you, you know, from the front front right wheel to the back, you know, wheel, whatever, you can use that. Uh, the recon platoon, uh, they can make all the transports uh, have a recce for plus 10 points. So that means your trucks, your hand mags, everything you can, for the recon platoon selector, you can make everything recce, which is kind of cool. Um, Viking and Totenkopf, the SS divisions, if you're going to play them, there's a couple of scenarios where you, you have to that you take their selector. They've all got to be fanatics. Uh, tenacious leaders. Um, all units uh, may reroll failed order checks to advance. Um, and I think for the last, last couple of scenarios with the SS, it's called Shadow of Their Former Glory. So only the HQ can be veterans. Everybody else has to be regular. Uh, the Hungarians, they have what's called Guardians of the Frontier. So they can reroll uh, to see who's the attacker or defender. Um, and they also get D3 plus 1 hardcover defenses, sort of like the Italians. Uh, but they guaranteed to get you know a minimum of two. Uh, motivated elite. This is for the Stugs and the AT guns. Um, and the motivated elite is basically where you get to lose the the two D two pins as opposed to one. Um, they also have a thing called Pride of the Magyar. Um, so the tanks and armored cars can make an extra move at the beginning of the game in the first wave. Um, so they kind of they've come on. They can get an extra sort of advance move, and they can't be targeted for ambush using on that move. Um, in a multinational access force, only the German HQs can use the SNAP-2, and they can use it on the Hungarians. The Hungarians cannot do it back to them. So if you have a Hungarian officer, he can't tell the Germans to get going. Uh, the Soviets, they lose their extra free and experienced unit in taking the urban assault group platoon. So in a lot of those 4 by 4 urban tables, they don't get the extra guys. Um, they're sending in the specialists for this one. I guess Stalin wants a, a nice bloodbath. Um, the guard units, they also get the elite rule, the motivated elite, which is kind of cool. So you get the D2 pins. Not that the Soviets need all these special rules, mind you. Set the pace, the transport, and armored cars. Um, they, they can do the same thing as, as the, the motivated uh, elite for the, the Hungarians where they can do the extra move. Um, and the land lease vehicles can all be recce for extra 10 points. So their brain carriers can be recce. The scout cars can be recce. That's kind of cool. The Romanians, poor Romanians, they're getting the, they get the shaft here. Um, Stalin's con cannon fodder for every three regular slash inexperienced infantry units, you get an identical one for free, um, and you get access to Soviet gear, uh, so T-34s and things like that, including commissars. Okay, cool. Ancestral enemies, so they become fanatics when fighting in hand to hand with Hungarians. Well, okay, so I guess you could claim the guys in your Russian army uniforms are Romanians if you'd like. Um, there are some special rules as well. Uh, I'm going to show you the siege assets because that's one of the things that I think is, is a really neat uh, aspect of, of this book. Hold on. So in this book, they have these things called siege assets, which are kind of cool. And we've got attackers' assets, defending assets, and sort of neutral ones as well. The other rules like snow and mud and all that kind of stuff, I think they're in other rule books. So I'm not going to go on with that. Same with rubble. That's in the Battle of Berlin stuff too, and you know, uh, city fighting and shooting and junk like that. So. But these are ones that I thought were kind of cool. So basically, in some of them, you, you get the, the siege assets. And one asset is, you get one asset for 500 points. So if you're playing a 1,000 point game, both guys get two of these assets. A bigger game, if you're playing a tank war game, and you know, I don't know, 
if you're playing a huge game, you can get up to four. I guess you're playing 2,000 points. The attackers, they have preliminary bombardment, uh, smoke screen, big push, night infiltration, and prisoners interrogation. So preliminary bombardment is pre preliminary bombardment. The smoke screen is just like the one, in the same as in the bolt action book. Uh, the big push is kind of cool. You, you get a free infantry unit identical to the cheapest one already in the list. So that's yeah, kind of cool if you're playing the Soviets and you have like you know some pretty badass guard units, you get a free one. So that's I think that's a lot better uh, than the free you know cannon fodder unit. Um, night infiltration, you get two units that gain uh, forward deployment, and then uh, you get prisoner interrogation. So D three of the defender units, as turned by the attacker, lose their hidden status. So you kind of you got some intelligence there. Uh, the defenders they can fortify buildings. They can have street barricades. They have mine minefields and tank traps. So a fortified building, the building gets an extra plus one to the moon of a max of six. So that means your regular guys would be dying on a six if you were shooting in. Of course, um, that might counterbalance some of the YHE, but I don't know, man. I'd still stay away from those buildings if I could. Street barricades, D3, six-inch hardcover strips, minefield six by six. They can be anti-tank or anti-personnel. Uh, and if you use two of them, if you use two of your assets, you can mix the field, which is kind of cool. And tank traps, which uh, D3... Uh, six by three anti-tank obstacles, which make which are impassable for tanks. The neutral one, you have uh, sewer infiltration. Uh, snipers, you can take an extra sniper. Um, sewer infiltration, pardon me, allows you to pop up on your outflank, uh, sort of anywhere on the board, uh, as long as six inches away from an enemy. You can't run into an assault. Um, and what else do we have? Uh, Molotov cocktails. Uh, infantry units get a free anti-tank grenades. Ammo dump. Uh, building within six inches. Uh, get to re-roll ones when firing, but only for one of the units, uh, which is kind of cool. Any ones, pardon me, you get to re-roll ones. And frontline aid posts, basically the building becomes a medic building. So that's kind of cool. Uh, of course, they have snow and mud and all that other wonderful stuff. So that's the book. That's um, just the highlights here. I didn't want to let everything, any, all the cat out of the bag here. Just, just, just the head, I guess. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I'm glad I bought it. I'm looking forward to maybe not doing it, all these scenarios in the sense of like, I'm going to play the Hungarians, and or I'm going to play the Soviets, I'm going to play this battle, but in that way, but but using the maps and the ideas and the siege assets and things like that for, um, you know, other battles that I have figures for, for example, maybe, you know, something like Breslau, like in, in Silesia, or even some of the, you know, outskirts of Berlin, or, or things like that, um, in other cities, Prague, for example, um, until they come out a book with a book like about that. So I highly recommend it. Um, it's a lot better in my personal opinion. I found that reading through some of the scenarios, some of them are, are like totally the Soviets are going to win. Uh, and in other cases, it's like, well, the Germans got the upper hand or the Axis has the upper hand here. And it's some, to be honest, in some of the other campaign books, I found that like uh, they sort of seem to be really weighted to one side. Um, so let's like, say, for example, like, like uh, the Operation Sea Lion ones or, or Gigant. Uh, or Jijant or whatever, however you want to pronounce it. I mean, you know, guys, you know, bashing cricket balls and stuff like that. I just thought it was kind of ridiculous. I mean, it was cool. It was interesting. But it just, at the same time, it was it was a bit tongue-in-cheek. And, ah, it was okay. But it, was, it wasn't it was that serious. Um, same with the Battle of the, battle of the Bulge was in Market Garden in some cases, I thought, were there were a couple scenarios that were a little, you know, it was like, well, you know, the, these guys are elite. They're the best of the best. And, you know, they're attacking the winner. You know, they shouldn't have, you know, you know, how can I say? I'm talking about the Germans and some of the, the scenarios. They shouldn't have so much uh, pushing them back. And, and, you know, it didn't seem to be too balanced in some ways. And like, for example, in the Western Desert book, some of the new Italian rules are just, I mean, it's like, you know, why even take them if you wanted to play competitively? If you want to play historical, okay. But, I mean, if it's for bragging rights between you and your mates, eh, I don't know. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. I uh, highly recommend this. Go pick it up. I think it's $19.99 if you get on the in Great British Pounds, Pound Sterling, and you get the free figure. So, oh, there's the bell. I got to go. You guys take it easy and have a good one. Talk to you later. Keep those brushes moving. Thanks for watching. Bye, boys.